Hello, I am Mario Kerekstra. Uh, in this video, I will be chatting about how I work as both a creative and a designer in advertising. And in doing so, I'll be sharing some of the projects I've done over the last few years. I work at AMV Biblio in London, where I am a creative design director. And I describe my role there as being uh, a hybrid between a creative and a designer. And I think working in advertising as a creative and a designer has given me a unique perspective on how advertising's creative thinking combined with design thinking uh, can solve problems and also lead to interesting and unexpected creative solutions. So I am originally uh, from Holland. I grew up in a small city called Alkmaar, which is about maybe 30 minutes north of Amsterdam uh, and is famous for its cheese market. I think my, my first interest in, in creative stuff, like I think with a lot of people was through drawing from a, from a young age. Um, uh, I, was, I was also, I was particularly interested in animation art also from a very young age. It, it, I don't know why, it, it, it fascinated me for some reason and I, I remember my mom would buy me books about it um, that I would read and I would trace the images and, and, and the illustrations and you know, it was just an early creative outlet. So when I got a little older, I went to a design school in Amsterdam, and, and this is the place where I, I probably first got introduced to design, ideas, uh, topography, color palettes. Um, I, I kept on doing more illustration work there and, and, and exploring and developing that. So I uh, sort of ended up moving to London by accident, really. Um, after I'd finished school in Amsterdam and I'd worked at this uh, packaging design consultancy for about two years. Um, I had said to my mom, I said, you know, I'd like to go uh, abroad to work, and not really knowing where or what to do. And, and my mom was like, oh, you know, maybe you should have a look in London and maybe, maybe try and go um, to college there instead. You know, go to proper art college because I'd never been uh, to, to a real, real art college. Um, and, now, and this is where it gets a bit more interesting. The, the reason my mom suggested London was because she was in London on the day of um, Lady Diana's funeral. And obviously the whole nation was in mourning, so uh, everything was shut and there wasn't much to do. Uh, so my mom was just strolling, strolling through the city and she happened to walk past the old um, St. Martin's building. Uh, and the old building used to say on the outside, next to the entrance, it said um, Central St. Martin's College of Art and Design. So for reasons still unclear to me to this very day, um, she wrote down that name in a notebook, uh, completely unaware of its reputation as, a, as an art college. So who knows why she wrote it down? It must have, I don't know, it must have been a mother's intuition or something. Um, so yeah, so then, uh, so around six or seven years later, when I said, oh, I'd like to move abroad or, or go and do something abroad, she pulled out this notebook and went, you know, why don't you have a look at this place? I ended up graduating from St. Martin's with a, with a first class degree, uh, which I was very proud of. I don't think, looking back, it was never some, some like a big dream of mine to get into advertising. Um, but a lot of the people that, you know, who I'd read about in, in, in college and, and, and seen different things, they, they, like most of them had worked in advertising at one point in their careers, and, and some of them had in their whole careers. So, you know, I was curious and I wanted to see what it was like. So the, the projects I'll be showing now were all done at a &V in the last four years or so. The projects being shown have also at least won one Grand Prix in Cannes, uh, and some and most of them multiple ones, uh, and they've won numerous, numerous design awards. So Trash Isles was a project for which a creative team uh, had come up with the idea of recognizing um, a giant patch of plastic trash uh, which had grown to the size of France uh, in the North Pacific Ocean as a, as a country. Um, the brief I got was to design a visual identity for this quote-unquote country made out of 
uh, trash and, and, and plastic and, uh, and to design a flag, currency, a passport and postage stamps for it. So I think the hardest thing on, on this project was just getting started on it really because designing currency and, and passports and that sort of stuff like that it, that's such a, it's such a specialized form of design and I think looking back it was such a it was because of those things it was it was it was such a, an unusual um, project to be working on so there was at the start there was lo there was so much research that went into into that project and trying out different things and I, I remember like progress at the start was was painstakingly slow until you know to get it all rolling and, and the, to get to get it somewhere um, and I think the, the research thing in particular like I think the project what was important about it was that it looked authentic like it couldn't look like you know monopoly money it had to be like uh, it had to be it had to look real and I think it, it was the, the the general idea for the whole project and obviously the imagery that got used that's what made it unexpected um, I think this project also perfectly illustrates that approach of com combining creative thinking um, and design thinking because 50% of it was a creative idea and then 50% of it was design. Um, you know, the, the, the creative idea was turning that giant batch of trash into a country and then the way the visual identity ended up looking um, was the result of design thinking and, and, and design solutions. Um, and then that thinking was then executed with, with the, like I said with before, with the, with the level of design craft and detail that you see coming out of uh, boutique design agencies. So Trash Isles ended up winning uh, two Grand Prix um, in Cannes, uh, one of which was the Design Grand Prix, and more specifically it was the Design Grand Prix for identity design. Um, it also ended up winning a yellow pencil for identity design at DNAD. Um, it was also the category winner for graphic design at the Beasley Designs of the Year exhibition here uh, at the Design Museum in London. Um, and subsequently, because it won, it was the category winner, it also got made part of the permanent collection. So for addresspollution.org, the creative team had come up with the idea of uh, tying house prices in London to uh, air pollution levels, bringing the reality of the effects of air pollution in London to residents. Um, the challenge for me on this project was having to come up with a, a system that could display all that really complicated information in a way that, you know, uh, that was easy to understand and people would get straight away. And the initial brief that I got on this was to, to design a, an information chart that would go on to a website. Um, you know, I felt at the time that I could do something a bit more interesting. So from there, I went away and, 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 and came up with an idea for a complete like integrated visual identity instead. Now the, um, the visual identity was inspired, the look of it was inspired by the look of like official government forms, that really clean, sterile, stripped back look and, and that type of visual language. And then what I did was to, to offset that really, really clean look, an official look, uh, I came up with the idea to use um, like these really bold graphic spikes uh, because the idea for that was that it showed air pollution in a visceral way. And so those spikes then became the, the type treatment that went onto the, onto the posters. We used it for projections, we used it for animations where you have lungs uh, breathing in and out and these spikes form. From a visual point of view, I think it was that combination of these this, this official strip back clean look combined with those spikes gave the identity a really um, modern and contemporary uh, feel. As for my role, this is another project that shows how, how me being a creative and designer like overlap and intertwine, uh, you know, because I might have not come up with the idea of tying house prices to air pollution levels, but I did come up with the idea to do a complete integrated visual identity for it and, and how, what that looked like. 
Um, and just like with Trash Isles, the visuals, the, the visual identity was the art direction for the project. Uh, AddressPollution.org ended up winning a Grand Prix for Health for Good, um, and it also won a Sustainable Development Lion. Um, and what was really cool with that is because because it won the sustainable line, the sustainable development line, the, the client ended up getting um, forty five thousand uh, pounds a prize, which then was a, obviously a, a massive help, uh, and which went straight into keeping this new public service that we created, you know, long, running long term, and, and into developing the next uh, campaign for it. So, Womb Stories was a campaign that opened up. The many narratives and broke taboos about the invisible pain and heartache and, and joy of being a, a woman in a powerful and a very relatable way. And what's interesting about this project is that what I ended up doing for it, was, it was never a brief. I never got briefed to, to work on this project. Um, but early on in the, pro in the process, the, the CCOs of A&B uh, showed me like a rough edit. Um, of the film and, and I could obviously see that it was going to be super visual and I had worked on the previous campaign for this client which was called uh, Viva La Volva and I had done some, some nice work for it as well and um, um, so I said to, to them, I said oh, you know we should, do, we should do something really cool for this, do a cool design piece and, uh, and they were like yeah, you know what do you have in mind and um, you know as we were chatting uh, about different things and, and we landed on an idea of you know would it be possible to do a uh, to do a custom typeface you know for this campaign from a design point of view the the main challenge for this project is how do you typographically show the womb because it's obviously it's a very unusual um, subject to, to design a typeface around and I remember looking at a lot of French typography for this uh, for reference from like the 60s and the 70s because you know, for its elegance and its and its and the shapes that they tend to use, and um, so I took a lot of inspiration from that and um, started working on it. And I think the typeface it took it took quite a while to design. Um, it took about three and a half four months, and it was quite tricky to get it right. But um, I think finally I did, and it got presented to the client, um, and they knew nothing about it. But like, thankfully, they loved it, and it ended up getting used, and literally. I think every touch point of the campaign, which was uh, which was great. Womb Stories ended up winning four Grand Prix in Cannes, uh, one of which was in the integrated category. And I think what was really cool about that, because it was obviously a massive, massive team effort, um, and everybody pulled their weight, and, and it just showed that every single element of that campaign you know, work together beautifully in harmony and, and everything was crafted to, to absolute perfection. So the most recent project that I've worked on is uh, Sheba Hope Reef. This was a project about coral reef restoration where uh, AMB and Sheba had planted a, a living coral reef in 2019, which grew to a, a fully thriving reef uh, on a site near Indonesia that was once completely uh, barren. So what is quite funny about this project is that initially I never, I, I didn't really want to be involved. Uh, what happened was that the two other creatives on the project uh, came to me, came to me early on, asking whether uh, whether I wanted to design, get involved and design a logo uh, for Whole Brief to go on a site. And I was like, what? It's like, like, what's the point? Like, you planted an actual coral reef and you're asking me to design. Um, a logo to go on a site. Um, so I was like, uh, I'm, I'm cool, I'm not that interested. Uh, so then like, I don't know, two days later, the, the CCO of AMB at the time came over to me laughing. And he goes, hey, Mario, what's this? I heard you don't want to be involved. And I was like, I mean, you know, it's, it seems a bit small. And, and he goes, yeah, that's a fair point. So um, uh, we ended up chatting about it. And, and, you know, as a result of that, I obviously got a, um, a, um, a, a better understanding of, of the you know the ambition of the client. So from the original ask of uh, of doing that logo, uh, I then instead I came up with the idea of doing a bespoke digital font that grows coral that would form the basis of a, a campaign identity for the whole project. 
The font was designed using hexagons because the actual reef uh, is made out of um, hexagonal shaped reef stars. So I designed uh, a, a, a digital version in Illustrator, just a 2D flat simple version. Uh, I then briefed a um, 3D slash CGI studio to build it uh, in 3D and to animate it and, and to really uh, make it come to life. And what was interesting as well, while we were doing that, we were working uh, very closely with a marine biologist because from a design and art directional point of view, I think it was really important that the digital uh, font was authentic because it was, in, in, in essence, it was, a, it was like a digital extension of the actual real reef. And, and the marine biologists made sure that like the, the fish, the coral species, the color palette, that's all native to that part uh, of the Indian Ocean where the actual reef is. And so I think that just gives it a layer of uh, authenticity, which I, I, I think was really important. And then as for my role on this project, this is, this is like the perfect example of where I'm involved with, uh, with literally everything from creative direction to art direction to designing things myself to overseeing other bits and bobs and, and, uh, and literally everything in between, which uh, I mean, I, I, I enjoyed that way of working. It was really great to see uh, Hope Reef winning two Grand Prix in, uh, in Cannes last year, one of which was uh, the Grand Prix for topography in the industry craft lines. And I think what was great about this project in particular is on top of, you know, awards are great, but on top of that, like this genuinely, genuinely did something good in the world and is continuing uh, to do so, which I think just being involved with the project from that point of view, that it actually did something in the world, that's, that's what I'm most proud of personally, really. So I think that when you compare the projects, the four projects I just shared, um, it's clear to see, obviously, that they're all very different projects. They, they look, aesthetically, they look completely different from each other. But what they do all have in common is uh, that they were all approached with this philosophy that combines creative thinking and design thinking to come up with interesting uh, creative solutions and to solve problems. And the visuals are the result of that thought process and not a predetermined style. Um, they are then executed with the kind of uh, design craft and the level of detail um, that you find in boutique design agency. Um, and it's th that approach that's how I would sum up my own personal uh, design style. And it's, it's an approach that I first came across many years ago while studying at uh, St. Martin's, and which I've tried to apply to my own work and, and developed over the years and perfected over the years. And it's not perfect yet, you know, I'm still developing that bit, but it's getting there. Uh, and this approach is what I am very passionate about because I do feel that if you get it right, it can lead to original and unexpected creative work.